Hi, everybody. This is Dr. Jonathan Kuttner. You know, many years ago, when I was at medical school, which was in the last century, I remember a very eminent neurology professor who was lecturing to us, who said to us, to our class, you reach your biological peak in your 20s, and from then on, it's all downhill, and especially to do with your brain. I remember hearing that and thinking, oh my goodness, because I was in my 20s at the time. The good news is that he couldn't have been more wrong. <laughs> As was probably the truth with so many other things. Um, you actually, and his statement was, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. And in fact, he's wrong. You can teach an old dog new tricks for the rest of your life, right into grand old age. You can continue learning new tricks. And the way you do that is with a process that is called neuroplasticity. This is one of the great uh, advances and the great discoveries of the last 20 years in neuroscience. And neuroplasticity means changeability. That's the real meaning of plastic. Plastic means it can be, it's malleable and changeable. Nerves, changeability of nerves, neuroplasticity. And neuroplasticity is something which we all do every day of our lives to a greater or lesser extent. It depends. So the definition is that neuroplasticity is the ability of your brain, and not of every part of your brain, but of, in particular, the synapses. The synapses are the connections where one nerve talks to another. So you have a trillion of these little nerves talking to each other inside your brain and in your spinal cord. And neuroplasticity is the ability of those synapses to change, to modify their function and the ability of your brain to grow new synapses. How exciting is that? So we have the ability to grow new connections and we have the ability to modify new connections. And what drives this change is three big things. The first is that when you learn something, especially if you learn something new, you fire up this neuroplasticity. The second is the great teacher, which is life life's experiences, you adapt, you change, you learn. And the third is brain injury. So you have a head injury or you have a stroke, some kind of damage to your brain. Your brain uses this as a stimulus to then start neuroplasticity, to get back to, nor to normal or to get back to better function. So this is very exciting. However, there is a dark side to neuroplasticity. And the dark side to neuroplasticity is that this process can occur and can actually cause you real problems. The main place that neuroplasticity can in fact not be your friend is in chronic pain. So what happens with chronic pain is that, it, you know, let's go back, what happens with pain is that say you twist your ankle. As you twist your ankle, little nerve endings in the ankle pick up a pain message. That is zoomed up to the spinal cord, and then you get to the very first synapse or the very first connection. And as the pain message comes along and it continues up, you're not aware you've done anything. The pain message comes, jumps through the synapse with transmitters, zooms up to your brain, comes to the little upside down man, the homunculus on the other side of your head, like that. Light goes on in the ankle part of the homunculus and you think, oh, I've, I've twisted my ankle. Oh, my ankle's sore. In the next second, neuroplasticity kicks in. What it does is in the synapses, in the connections on the way up to your brain, little amplifiers turn on, to click, click, like that. And as the amplifiers turn on, what happens is your pain gets bigger. 
And I'm sure all of you have noticed this, that you bang something, you twist something, you get an initial pain, and then you get, an, oh my God, that's worse. And the worse is that neuroplasty is kicked in, and now that whole message is amplified. Why? Because it's a protective response. Your brain and your pain system is making darn sure that you actually know that you've damaged yourself. Now, under normal circumstances, you put some ice on it, you then get a bit of treatment, you start walking, and then your ankle gets better. And as the ankle gets better, those little, trans those little amplifiers all along the synapses, they turn down and you're back, and you're back to playing sport and walking and doing whatever you do. However, what would happen if the amplifiers did not turn off? What actually happens, and this is not uncommon, if the amplifiers on that pathway do not turn off, what happens then is that the, even though the ankle starts to get better and better and starts to heal because bodies heal, you continue feeling amplified messages which you read in your mind as pain. So the pain does not get better. Now, this is neuroplasticity. But is neuroplasticity acting not in your best interests? And the, out, the outcome of this is that you feel and can continue to feel pain in your ankle for months, for years, for the rest of your life if those amplifiers don't turn off. It may then spread in the, in the pain system and then you start feeling your whole leg hurts and then it may even spread further till your whole body hurts. So this is neuroplasticity in chronic pain, which the medical name for this is sensitization. And it's central, so it's in your pain system, central sensitization. And this affects hundreds of millions, in fact, probably affects billions of people around the world to a greater or lesser extent. And the vast majority of them do not know that this is the underlying problem. And they don't get better because they go to doctors and other health professionals and they say, I've got a sore ankle and it's just not getting better. And the doctor looks at it and then treats the ankle. And if you treat the ankle and the ankle's healing, it doesn't actually change anything because it's in the synapses, in the connections in your pain system. That's the fundamental problem. So the thing is, you think, oh my God, if that's the case, I'm screwed. And the answer is no. No, you're not. No, you're not. And this is where it gets really exciting. Because if neuroplasticity got you into the problem, guess what? You can harness the same force. You can harness the same wonderful process to get yourself out of pain. Using the neuroplasticity, the ability of your brain, your mind, to modify and change the function of the way that the synapses work and to change the structure, to grow new synapses. Now, to do this requires you to learn a new set of skills and these are called neuromind techniques. These techniques, when you apply them consistently and there's a, there's a range of neuromind techniques which uh, you can customize for yourself because we're all different kinds of learners. We, we're, we're visual learners, the majority of people, but some are auditory, some are kinesthetic, learn through movement. And you can find there are neuromind techniques that will suit you. And then once you've got that, then you start to apply them and you apply them and you apply them. And it's like a new skill. And eventually you get to the point where the pain, those you use the neuroplastic process to turn down the amplifiers in your spinal cord and in your brain. So this is a very exciting process. And the answer is, of course, that you can teach a new dog new tricks and an, or an old dog new tricks. And that old dog is all of us, all of us. So if you want to learn more about this very exciting journey, then just click on the, on the, um, link below and this will take you to um, a, a, 
a place where you can actually book a call to discuss with people, with experts um, that work with me, um, how you can, the next step to go so that you can learn how to harness the superpower, this neuroplastic process inside your own mind so that you can make your own pain better. Thank you very much.